right, so in the first part of the video, we were out in the field and um, kind of talked about places where you're most likely to find Native American artifacts. Um, the girls were out there helping us. Um, you can see some of the artifacts that we found out there today. That was a, not a bad haul for just a little bit of time. Um, but what we're here to do to, next is once you find this stuff, how can you use it educationally? How can you identify it? How can you share it with others? Things like that. Um, so the worst thing that we can do is find something like this and just put it in a shoebox and put it away. The best thing to do is to share the stories. So when we find stuff like this, it's something, so if me and Michael and the girls, we were out walking today and we found this, I pretty much we'll always remember where I picked up the stuff. It's a good story. It's a good way to spend time with your family and friends. Uh, it's a good place to go and think sometimes, just walking in a field and uh, stuff like that. So, but to um, identify this stuff, again, Michael, um, he's been around it for a long time. Um, I've been around it a long time, but I'm just recently um, starting to get into being able to identify the stuff pretty much as soon as we find it. But um, the more you suck like anything, the more you study, the more you learn about it. But um, all right, so some of the ways that you can find out what this is. First of all, we're in South Carolina and we found arrowheads for sure, if we want to start with the arrowheads. So first, if you wanted to do a search online, you would just put in something like South Carolina arrowhead identification, South Carolina prehistoric artifact identification, something like that. So everybody does a Google search now. Um, so you can start there and you can get into certain sites like um, the South Carolina Institute of Archaeology and Anthropology. Um, to get to their identification page <clears throat> and the um, Foothills chapter of the um, South Carolina Archaeological Society. They have a page um, that does identification and plus that's one of the clubs that you could join if you wanted to get deeper into it and more involved with this type of activity, um, archaeology and stuff like that. Again, the the archaeological chapters that are recognized, they're usually going to have greater access to property. Whereas if like I walked up to somebody's house and said, hey, can we walk in your field? You know, not always, but if you approach with, you know, some sort of, uh, uh, you know, source organization or something like that, um, sometimes it's a lot easier. And they actually, people call them and say, hey, will you come and check out my site? That's the best way to do it. And then they ask for volunteers because, you know, um, they, they can't walk the whole field by themselves, so they really like to have volunteers come out and help them from time to time. So um, let's get into this. Uh, we'll get into some of the websites in a few minutes, but the, the old go-to for stuff like this is always a book to me. Um, so the best thing to do if you really want to get into it is to invest in some sort of publication. One that we like to use is the Overstreet. It's identification and price guide, but um, thing, but it has tons of pictures of artifacts and stuff like that in it, and it's to our area. So, let's see if I can find something in here at the beginning. Might have to cut to it. But anyways, this breaks it down into every area. Look at this. So, so regions. So right now. Where we live in South Carolina, we would be in the eastern seaboard region, but we also border the Gulf Coastal Zone, which runs through the bottom of South Carolina, through Georgia, and we're also in the eastern central. So we're in a place where you could find artifacts that are common to the eastern central, eastern seaboard, and the Gulf Coastal. But what I want to do, since we are in the eastern seaboard, I want to flip over to the ES section and see if we can uh, identify some of the, especially the projectile points and stuff that we found today. And Michael's got the same book. It's a different book. They come out with one of these every other year. And so they update them and stuff like that. So he's got one where he was looking up a few things. And so what I've earmarked over here is one of the artifacts we found out there. Um, the girl found the paddle drill, remember that? And so they actually have one similar to it. 
So if I lay this over, you could kind of see the same pattern. This was a drill. This, these things would extend it way on out at times. And so you see how long in this picture this one looks. But basically, you get the point. These things have been around, it says there, from 200 years ago to 11,500. So this is a tool that's been around. It's like a screwdriver type thing. So uh, that screwdrivers haven't changed much. Mm -hmm. These things haven't changed much. You can see in thousands of years. This one's been used and broken. It's a really cool piece there. We get over, I um, found that nice little striated piece. There's a section in this book. This thing almost fits in, right into it. So it's a Guilford. This thing is 5,000 years before present, so that means it's before today. 5,000 to 6,500 years old. And whenever I set this on this one, it looks almost the same size, like it could have been in this book. Really cool. And so that's clear quartz, clear quartz. And again, yes, these are what they call archaic points, which means they're really old. One of the other ones that we found out there, a real beaut out there. And so you look in the book, and what you do is you just try to find something that's similar. Look what I did. I found the bases, basically the same width. The shape looks very similar. And when I overlay it, and I think these in here are actual size, think in this book I'd say they are but look and it's weird how doesn't matter where you are Michael could have made it I could have made it during that time they made them about the same size that's the technique they used so it was a it was technique a it was something yeah it was uh, these things were fads so they started out with the lancelet points and different things and then they came into this so these things weren't all be this wouldn't be an arrowhead right because nope. there's no way if you put this on the end of an arrow, it's pretty heavy. It's not going to shoot very far with a little um, bow and arrow. This is probably some sort of uh, atlatl spear tip knife or blade. knife blade. You can see this is basically the same thing. Imagine this. This one's just been, it might have broke at some point, but this one they've um, put the striations in. Basically the same type. You see you still got the same kind of base. So what we got on this one, let's see. So this is, could be um, a Savannah River knife. It could be a Kirk. Um, there's some of them, they give them different names, but they all, some of them are very similar. And so whenever you see one like this, it says Savannah River. It also could be a Kirk or a Stanley. So there's just different little things. That, but they're all made around the exact same time. And those names are all names that we gave them. Yes. We don't have any idea who these people were that made this thing, but some archaeologists found that point and assigned that name. Um, so he may call it a Stanley or a Kirk. People in Georgia may have a different name for it. That, that happens a lot in archaeology. It'd be the same exact point with two different names. Right. So it's it just, gets confusing. Yeah, so they name a site. It might be after the landowner, so the Taylor. So we got the Taylor site. We got the Taylor point. Yep. They got, you know, different things like that. So some of the early, whoever early on, they got to name a lot of these yep. artifacts from early archaeological sites. Most of them is private property and places like that. But these are found along the Savannah River Basin. Yep. Basically from where we are all the way down to the coast and all around in this Piedmont. Um, let's see, did I have any more in there? I, that's about all I had in here. But you can see books like this are great. No. Um, what did you find over there in your book? I just I had this little Yadkin here and uh, found it right there. Woodland of Mississippi area, 2,500 years before present. Um, once again, it's called Yadkin because they were found in the Yadkin River in North Carolina. That's the first place they assigned the name for this style of point. They show up all over the southeast. Um, really cool little point, usually well made. And when you identify these things, the technique they use to make them is part of the identification process. Uh, there's all kind of, the Overstreet Guide is great. It's kind of the over, overhead look of, of artifacts. You know, it's a 36,000 feet view of your artifacts in your area. Once you dive in deep, you start hunting for text and publications just concerning your area. It gets a lot more in depth and a right. lot more uh, technical as far as research. Uh, but the Overstreet Guide is the best way to start this process. Yeah, it's a really good book to invest in for beginners especially. Um, again, we have this uh, book from the guy that actually did the petroglyph survey at Haygood Mill. 
Um, Tommy Charles and Christopher Moore wrote this book about chip stone tools of South Carolina. That's a really good one. You can get it on Amazon. This other book has pottery. Let's see this pottery stuff that we've got. So this is a good book to get pottery. This is just one book that I had that had um, samples of pottery. You can buy books that are dedicated to pottery. So um, Stallings Island, you know, there's fiber tempered at the there coast. You, you get into yeah. all sorts of different potteries. This is little swirly motifs, what they call Mississippian error. So you got, and this style right here is almost kind of like the Catawba or something like that. It's got black and kind of red, kind of like the ones we have on display at Hey Good Mill. But you can see in here, we got different stuff, check stamp, different things. It was just uh, whatever style that they were using. They use reeds to inlay this stuff. Sometimes they made um, uh, woven cloth and stuff like that, um, fiber. Uh, they would just roll, you know, vines and stuff. It's just sometimes they put their thumbnails in it. And to so find this stuff is also you <clears throat> typically do find small pieces. You rarely ever seldom find a complete yep. pot or complete vessel. Pretty much everything, especially yeah. in plowed fields, is going to be broken up. Arrowheads are small enough to where sometimes they make they it through, but the pottery and stuff especially gets broken up over time. Um, but this book here, Archaeology in South Carolina, it's a really nice book to get. Um, there's all sorts of publications out there. There's even books that uh, you know, talks about Native American sites and stuff in Pickens County, Oconee County, different things like that. So I know you, uh, young folks are into the computers, so you can go to different places um, online, like the uh, Peach State Archaeological Society. Is a, they have a really good identification page. Um, you can just uh, click on, you know, stone points and it'll pop up different things. And then under that, they'll pop up other things. And with the tools like this, I could click on this and it would show you five or six different ones in the same style. Really cool. Um, another thing we talked about was the laws. Of course, you can't look for artifacts in just any place. If it's game management, state-owned property, things like that, you don't want to be out there um, looking in places like that because there are um, you're subject to getting fined. You may um, find something but you just leave it where you found it. Yep, uh, if you ended something like that go out there take a picture of it. I know it's hard to leave it but you are subject to getting fined if you're on um, game management or anything like that. Uh, one thing that they do offer if you get into it, again my uh, advice would be to join one of the archaeological societies. They have the you know, the greatest access to, to these types of sites. Like I said, people will call them and say, hey, we found something. And the club gets to go out and investigate it. So that's really one of the best ways to do it if you want to be, um, you know, safe and careful about everything, making sure you're um, following all the antiquities laws and things like that. Um, South Carolina does offer a hobby license for collecting fossils and artifacts. It's actually um, for underwater. But there is a license that you can get and apply for, which allows you to scuba dive and find artifacts. Um, and pretty much you can keep the artifacts that you find. What they ask for you to do is do a quarterly report of things. So if I was scuba diving and I found this, I'd say I found some check stamp pottery, I found a Guilford point and this, you know, you just report to them what you have, take a picture of it. And basically it's yours to keep. That's a good way to do it because you got an official license to be able to do it. And it's a good resource for the, the institute as well so that they can see what's being found and what areas and stuff. And if they see something special, they might, you know, come up and do a more intensive survey of the property. And, of course, we got our bottle caps and stuff like that. So, uh, but everything, we've got everything here. we got almost paleo. we got thousands of years old, nine, ten thousand years old to probably within the last year because this thing's still shiny it's not rusted or anything marbles all sorts of stuff there's the treasures right beneath our feet everywhere we walk we're walking in their footsteps we're walking in the footsteps of our ancestors we're walking in the footsteps of the ancient ones and it's just all beneath us and if we go far enough we're walking into the bones of the dinosaurs and all that stuff which roam this property and roam this land with us we're just here for a short while and i'm sure what will we leave behind so Again, that's uh, this part of the section. We hope you enjoyed it. And